Wheaties presents Dangerous Assignment. On stage tonight from Hollywood, Dangerous Assignment, another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But... When I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to end up with my having to decide whom to hand my gun to, the guy who's trying to help me or the guy who's trying to kill me. Morning, Commissioner. Steve, have a seat. Thanks. Ruth. Yes, Commissioner. Steve's here. How are you doing with this plane reservation? All set. And tell him I've even got a bottle of mosquito lotion for him. Mosquito lotion? Sounds like I'm going to get stung in more ways than one. Where are you sending me? Africa. Oh, great. Steve, you know how vitally important Africa is to most of the world as a source of raw materials. Well, we have positive evidence that certain interests have sent a man to Africa to conduct a hate campaign against us with the tribal witch doctors. Witch doctors? Now, look. Sure, it sounds fantastic, but unfortunately, it's true. And uh, you know how much influence those witch doctors have with their tribe. If they ever form into a block against us, the entire position of the United Nations in Africa will be in serious jeopardy. And most of the vital raw materials we get from there will be cut down to a trickle. Mm -hmm. Who is this visiting fireman who's stirring up the trouble? We don't know his name, but according to our information, two British agents have caught up with him and have him in their custody. At present, they're somewhere in the interior, heading for the Gold Coast. You want me to meet them there? Yes, at Fort of Secondi. Your plane will get you there the day after tomorrow. Now, Steve, it's vital to us to find out all we can about the organization behind this man. We're depending on you to get the whole setup out of him. Lucky me, right in the middle again. When you get to the port of Secondi on the Gold Coast, go to the Black Ivory Bar. You'll be contacted there. Now, Steve, get over there. Talk to this man and get enough information on his organization so we can smash it to pieces. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Dangerous assignment will continue in a moment. Now, here is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin. Begin a great day with Wheaties. Yes, if you've got a morning full of work tomorrow, get a breakfast full of Wheaties. Stride through the morning high, wide, and handsome with breakfast of champions. Begin a better breakfast with Wheaties and milk and fruit and see if it doesn't make a difference. See if you don't work better, work easier, and finish feeling fine with Wheaties to help. Because, listen, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. A whole golden kernel rolled out flat and toasted. Yes, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. That's why Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Whole wheat energy Wheaties have for you. Whole wheat vitamins and minerals, protein too. No wonder they can help make a difference. You try it. Try it tomorrow. See for yourself how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. <laughs> That's the nice thing about my job. The commissioner always tries to make it sound so easy. All I have to do is drop over to Africa and talk to a guy who's been stirring up trouble among the witch doctors. Sounds like a cinch. But I've got an uneasy hunch that before it's over, some of those witch doctors will be stirring up plenty of trouble for me. It's Wednesday night when I get to Sakandi on the Gold Coast, and I head for the Black Ivory Bar. It's almost deserted. But down at one end, the girl raises her eyes at me briefly over her glass. But this is working hours, so I slide onto a stool at the other end of the bar, and pretty soon a fat little gent eases up to me. I have been expecting you, Mitchell. Oh? Who are you? Ralph de Gideo, the one who was to contact you here. Come. Where to? To a deserted warehouse at the waterfront. The two British agents are holding the man you seek there. Oh, why all this hocus-pocus? This whole thing must be, how you say, undercover. The prisoner has many friends who would like very much to know where he's been held. Okay. Well, how do we get there? I don't feel like walking much in this heat. But this is but a short distance. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> you decided you liked this end of the bar better, huh? I decided maybe you'd buy me a drink. I'm sorry. I already have a date. You could do better, you know. I don't doubt it, but this is business. 
suit yourself. All work and no pay, you know. <laughs> Friendly little town, isn't it, the Gideon? <laughs> Indeed. Well, come on, let's go. How much further is this place, the Gideon? See the small building we're approaching at the end of the pier? Oh, I don't see any lights in it. Oh, but of course not. The windows have been boarded up. Here we are. The door is around this corner. Come. There's no door here. No, indeed, Mitchell. Yeah, I kind of figured this could be a trap. <coughs> Drop the knife. One more inch and you will be... Drop it before I break your arm. That's better. Now... You and I are going to have a little talk. <laughs> he brings his knee up into my stomach and I jackknife. By the time I get my wind back, he's halfway down the pier. There's an old freighter tied up, swaying in and out with the tide. And just as he gets opposite, his foot catches in a coil of rope. He loses his balance and falls between the pier and the end of the ship. <laughs> oh, brother. Too bad. What? what? Oh, the girl in the bar. The girl in the bar, otherwise known as Alice. Well, thanks for that warning you gave me in the bar, Alice. I'm glad it registered, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, the look you sent my way when you told me I could do better than DeGidio sort of started me wondering if he was the right guy. So I was ready for him when he tried to spring the trap on me. If you got my message, why did you leave it? Well, I figured I could get a little information out of him, but by the look of him down there, he's not going to do much talking. Look, uh, where's this guy I'm supposed to talk to? The one the two British agents are bringing in. I'm afraid that's going to be up to you to find out, Mr. Mitchell. What? I thought it was all set up. You're right. It was all set up. But they've run into trouble. And it looks like you're going to have to go into the jungle after them. Oh, great. What happened to them? Lieutenant Ted Vance can tell you that. He's waiting for you now at headquarters. Who's Lieutenant Vance? In charge of the local police. Come along. I'll take you to him. <laughs> Well, Mitchell, looks like you're in for a bit of hoop to do. What's the setup, Lieutenant? Well, as you know, two chaps from our intelligence picked up this blighter in the interior and were bringing him down here to Secondi. Well, this afternoon, their native guide staggered in here, more dead than alive. He lasted just long enough to tell us that their party had been attacked in the jungle. By natives? No, although it could have been, the way that blighter has the witch doctor stirred up. No, the party was attacked by some, let us say, friends of this chap. I see. According to the guide, one of our agents was killed and the native bearers ran away. That leaves our other agent with us somewhere in the jungle with his prisoner. His friends are probably scouring the area for him right now. That's why there's a bit of a hurry up necessary. Now, uh, if you'll look at this map, sir. Righto. Here's the area where the attack took place. It's about a day and a half hike from here through some thoroughly nasty country. And you think Withers and his prisoner are somewhere between here and there heading this way? No, I don't. I think Withers realizes his chances of making it alone with his prisoner are pretty slim. I think he's holed up in that same area waiting for help. I see. That's a lot of jungle there. What do I use to find them? Radar? Well, before their guide left to come here for help, he told Withers the best place to hide. Now, you see this bend in the river, the little point of land that sticks out there? Uh-huh. Well, it's a natural vantage point and a lot of natural concealment there. With luck, you may find Withers and his prisoner at that bend of the river. Yeah, with luck. Well... I better get started right away. How many men can you give me? Well, that's the embarrassing part, old boy. What do you mean? I'm undermanned here as it is, and with the threat of uprisings, I've been ordered to keep every available man ready for action here. Oh, this is sounding peachier by the moment. So I'm supposed to sally forth into the jungle alone? Well, not quite. I can give you a native guide. Gee, thanks. I'm sorry. Orders are orders. Yeah. Hey, look, I've got an idea. How about lending me a few of your men just for a few hours? Lending you? I don't quite follow you, old boy. Look, I wouldn't have much chance in that jungle alone against those four rescuers, but if they weren't in the area, then it wouldn't be so bad. Oh, I see. You want my men to draw them off in another direction. That's right. We could all start out together, and then at the right point, my guide and I could get lost. The rest of the party would keep going in another direction. The rescuers might follow them. That would give me a little more time. At least it's a chance. Yes, yes. Well, we'll do it. We'll do it. I'll get three of my men, and I'll give you the best guide I've got, a chap named Mungo. We'll start in an hour. It wouldn't take a very sharp knife to cut this heat, Vance. Quite. 
And I can't say I care for these mosquitoes. <laughs> oh, your aim is terrific, old man. But these little fellows are nothing. Wait until you run into the kind that try to lift you off the ground. Well. Ah, we're coming to the river. This is the jumping off point, Mitchell. Up! Well, at least we've made enough noise for those four guys to be following us, if they're in this area at all. Yes. The rest of us will keep straight on along the river for two hours, then we'll start a wide circle back towards the Mongo! Mungo! Yes, Buana. Take your orders from Buana Mitchell. Guide him to the bend in the river. Yes, Buana. We'll stay undercover here until we're sure the coast is clear. Then we'll ford the river and go up along the other bank. Right. Well, chilly old Mitchell. Yeah, pip, pip, and all that. Come along, men. Here. We'll roost under these bushes on the riverbank for a few minutes. There we are. This ought to do. One now. Yeah. I hear footsteps. Where? Listen. Yeah. Coming along the trail. See. There they are. Yeah. The rescue party. Brother. Six of them. That's even worse than we figured. Shh. They're following Vance's party, all right. Good. By the time they realize they're on a wild goose chase, I hope we'll be heading back with Willard and his prisoner. Okay, Mongo, let's go. We can cross the river here, Wana. It will not come above our hips. Lead the way. And kindly avoid all crocodiles and snakes. How long you figure it'll take us to get to that bend in the river, Mongo? Well, we'll not get there before morning, Buana. Oh. Well, it's getting too dark to go any farther tonight. Yes. I'd better come here for night. Okay. we we'll stay in these bushes. Yeah. Looks like as good a spot as any. Okay, put our gear here and wait a minute. Hey. What's that? Drums of tribe. What tribe? Friendly, I hope. Not friendly drums. Death drums. Oh, great. Probably one of the tribes this guy I'm after has been stirring up. Where are they coming from? Can you tell? No, no can tell. Sometimes near, sometimes far. No yeah. can tell. Yeah, well, needless to say, they'll probably keep it up all night, too. Mongo hope so. What do you mean, you hope so? When drums go, he's not bad. When drums stop, he's bad. Yeah, well, they can stop any time as far as I'm concerned. We better figure out a watch schedule. Mongo watch first. Okay. Call me in a couple of hours. <laughs> Try sitting in the jungle at night, listening to a few assorted animals and tribal drums, knowing there are six armed men gunning for you. It's great for the nerves. But at least I've got Mongo, and knowing he's out there on watch is a big help. Finally, uh, get drowsy enough to doze off. Suddenly, I snap out of it. At first, I think it's a noise that wakes me up, and then I realize it's the lack of noise. The drums have stopped. There's not a sound. The whole jungle is quiet. Too quiet. Mongo, I head for the screen. It's bright moonlight now, but there's no sign of Mongo. Then I round the tree trunk, and there he is. He's lying on his back, and his throat has been cut from ear to ear. Steve Mitchell will continue his dangerous assignment in just a moment. Well, sir, I'm all for it. I'm all for you waking up to breakfast of champions. Wheaties Milk Fruit. It's a combination to help you breeze through your morning's work with pep left over. It's Wheaties, the crisp way to get your whole wheat. Because, yes, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Got it? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. No wonder it's Wheaties for folks with big things to do and places to go. No wonder Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. You try them. Get vitamins and minerals for stamina and vitality. Get them in Wheaties. Get protein. Get it in Wheaties. Get energy, whole wheat energy. Get it in Wheaties. Yes, tomorrow morning, shake out a bowl full of the crisp flakes, the golden flakes, Wheaties flakes. Pour on the milk, put on the raspberries or the bananas or whatever you like at your house, and then dig right in and know you're getting up-and-coming nourishment for an up-and-coming morning. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Sure, Wheaties at 7 
can help at 11. You try it. Breakfast of champions. Breakfast for you. Now, back to Dangerous Assignment and Steve Mitchell. So, Mongo's lying in front of me dead, and I'm on my own. Who killed him? Hostile natives or the rescue party? Suddenly, I realize I'm making a pretty good target of myself standing in the moonlight. I dive for the bushes just in time. <coughs> There's my answer. The natives don't carry rifles. That means the rescue party has figured out dances in my decoy scheme, and they're back on my trail again. I head for the river and wade upstream a couple of hours. I don't want to leave a trail for them if I can help it. Dawn comes, and I climb out of the water. The bend in the river is just a couple of hundred yards ahead of me. I wait a few minutes, but... No sign of anyone following me. Maybe I've given them a slip. Now my big problem is finding Withers and his prisoner. But it turns out to be no problem at all. I get to the bend of the river, and there are two guys in torn clothes hey, fighting on the riverbank in front of me. Hey, stop that fight! What? You heard me, both of you. Cut it out. That's better. Now get your hands up in the air, both of you. I'll see here, old man. Oh, shut up and do as I tell you, unless you'd like me to let a little daylight into you. Oh, very well, but you're making a mistake. You let me decide that, what? Well, you must be the two guys I'm looking for. Okay, which one of you is Withers? I am. I am. Well, right, now, look. I'm Withers. You're lying. I'm Withers. I tell you, I'm Withers. Shut up. Withers. So you're both Withers, huh? No, he's lying. Well, it ought to be easy enough to prove one way or another. Withers is a British agent, and they always have identification papers. You. You say you're Withers. Let me see your papers. Why, yes, certainly. I, uh, well, that's strange. I don't seem to have them. Now, wait. This other man stole them from me. I did not. Those papers are mine. Okay, Buster. Suppose you show them to me. Of course, I... It's... So you don't have them either. But they, they must have fallen into the river during the fight. Oh, sure, sure. Now, look. For the time being, I'm going to call you guys Pat and Mike for the lack of anything better. Now, you. You're Pat. I say Mitchell. I don't mind being called Pat, but my real name is Withers, and I think this is all pretty silly. So you know my name, huh? Well, Pat... Of course. You're Steve Mitchell, and you're supposed to meet me and my prisoner here. I see. You don't see Mitchell. This bloke heard me and my partner mention your name before his friends jumped us. That's not true. I heard it. Look, save it, both of you. Mike. I gather that's the name you've selected for me. That's right. Well, that's your privilege, of course, but I prefer my own name, Withers. Yeah, but you're Mike for the time being. I... Hold it. What's the matter? Listen. I don't hear anything. That's the point. Those birds stopped screeching all of a sudden. Yeah, someone coming. Okay, drop to the ground in those bushes, both of you. Uh, now, now, freeze. The first one of here lets a peep. Gets a hole in his head. But, Mitchell... Shut up. Yeah, the rescue boys. Oh, quiet. Nice try, Pat, but it didn't work. What do you mean, breaking that twig to try and attract their attention? Well, that was an accident. Was it? But of course that I wouldn't do an accident. He did it deliberately. Those men out there in the brush are his fellow agents. That's a lie. Keep your voices down, both of you. Come on, we're getting out of here. Now, just a minute, Mitchell. We can clear this up right now. This chap claims it's me. Very well. Let me ask him a question. Okay. You claim your name is Withers, old boy. That you're a British agent. All right. Who's your superior officer? Major Summersby in London. Huh. Sorry. Your information is a little obsolete. Summersby was promoted three weeks ago. Major Holcomb's in charge. Well, Pat. Why, I've, I've been out of touch with the home office for some time, but I can... No, oh, quite. All right, all right. Two can play at that game, my friend. Or you say you're with us. What's your wife's name? Helen. It's Edith. Now see here. You I... see here, both of you. This is no time to be sitting around the jungle playing guessing games. Look, one of you is with us, a British agent. The other one is an agent for another outfit, and he's been stirring up trouble with the witch doctors. Now, whichever one of you that is, has got friends beating the bush for him. Well, right now, we're heading for the coast before those friends catch up with us. That's a good idea, Mitchell. And get this through your heads. Right now, I don't know which one of you is which, but sooner or later, I'll figure it out. And in the meantime, I'm not taking any chances. The first one who tries anything gets his head blown off. You got that straight? Okay, get moving. So the three of us start heading down the river for the coast with me playing a little game of who's who in my mind and getting nowhere. Night comes and we camp by the river. The drums start in again, which doesn't help my peace of mind any. The three of us sit there eyeing each other like hungry vultures. I sit there holding a gun on them, fighting sleep. Mike finally rolls over and doses off. Right now, I'd give my eye teeth to do likewise. 
been a pretty rough go for you, Mitchell. Save the sympathy act, Pat. Oh, no, I mean it. Pretty rough on a chap beating his way through these jungles without any rest. Yeah, rest. Oh, brother, could I do with about 12 hours of sack time? Yeah. Nothing like sleep. You said it. Sleep. I... Mitchell? Mitchell. Mitchell, watch out! What? Get back, Pat! Back! Very well. I just wanted to see if I was comfortable, I suppose. Well, that was too close for comfort. Come on, both of you. You're going to sit back to back against this tree with your arms around it, and it's going to tie you that way. Now, come on over here, Pat. I guess you know who's who now, Mitchell. I'm beginning to get the idea, Mike. Thanks for warning me. I think this is a lot of foolishness. I thought you would. Sit down here. Okay. Stick your hands out behind you, both of you. There. Now, a couple of turns of rope, and I think you'll both stay put a while. Listen. Yeah. No drums. The last time they stopped, the guy got himself killed. What was that? I don't know. Sounds like it came from over near the river. I better have a look. I ease over towards the river. Nothing in sight. I start to turn. But just then, a guy drops out of a tree on top of me. He's got a... Not a native either. I knock him off. Then I spot his gun, but too late. Blood creases my leg. He aims again, but this time I beat him to it. He slumps over. Then I spot another guy slithering through the brush with a rifle pointing in my direction. I limp back to Pat and Mike as fast as I can. Mitchell! Mitchell, what happened? Your knee. It's bleeding. It sure is. Come on. I'm untying you. But who were they? Oh, a couple of scouts from the rescue party. we got to get out of here fast and quiet. Okay, come on. Get moving. Mitchell, can't we rest a bit? we walking all night. I guess we'd better stop. Well, that's the best news yet. Not good news to me, gents. What do you mean? Climbing up to the top of this plateau took what little strength I had left in my leg. Oh, so now we have to carry you, I suppose. Wait a minute. Look, down there, the rescue party. They're just starting up the plateau. Great. So they picked up our trail after all. Well... What now, General? It took us an hour to climb it. It won't take them that long. It's still about three hours to the coast. The way I'm limping, it won't take them long to catch up with us. Well, looks like I've got to make a decision. What do you mean? I've got to decide which one of you is with us and give my gun to him so he can get to the coast with the other guy. What about you? I'll try and find a place to hide until help gets back to me. Okay, I think I know which one of you is which. Pat. Well, congratulations, Mitchell. Mitchell, are you crazy? As I started to say, Pat, you're the wrong guy. What? No. Well, you had me worried for a moment. Mitchell! Pat, stop or I'll drill you. Come back here. That's better. Okay, Mike. There are three slugs left in this gun. One's for Pat if he gives you any trouble on the way to the coast. Here's the gun. Thanks, Mitchell. And congratulations. You picked the wrong man. <laughs> the conclusion of Dangerous Assignment in just a moment. First, here is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin. Put the sun in the sky and have a great morning. Begin a better breakfast with Wheaties. That's right. You can feel well, look well, work well when you begin a better breakfast with Wheaties and milk and fruit. Whole wheat energy, whole wheat vitamins and minerals, protein too. High-stepping nourishment for a high-stepping morning. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Yes, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. No wonder we say Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. You try it. Try it tomorrow. You're eating good to be feeling good. You're getting breakfast of champions. Try it. See for yourself how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. <laughs> Yes, you're not quite as clever as you thought, Mitchell. I must say you're very obliging, turning your gun over to me. I must say you put us in a bit of a pickle, Mitchell. Maybe not such a pickle, Pat. You see, Mike, I had you pegged as the wrong guy right from the start. 
Of course. That's why you gave me the gun. Sorry, but your bluff won't work. Stand back, Mitchell. No, wait. I want you to be nice and close. There. That's fine. Close enough? Close enough. You said there are three slugs in this gun. One for Pat, one to spare, and one for you in the stomach. Takes longer that way. So long, Mr. Mitchell. What? Empty! Sure is, Mr. You, you did have it figured out. That's right. Let go of me! With pleasure. Ah! Well, you just put back the ten years of my life you took away a minute ago, Mitchell. When you started to give that gun to Mike there, I knew my only chance was to make a run for it. Yeah? You know, there's one thing I'm curious about. What's that? This bloke was so clever with his answers, I began to find myself wondering whether I really was with us. How did you find out about him? Want to know a little secret? I didn't. What? Right up until the time I handed him that gun, I didn't have the slightest idea which of you was which. But you, you, you told him you'd figured it out. Sure, these guys operate a lot on bluffs, so I thought I'd toss one back at him. So let him think I'm smarter than he was. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. <laughs> All right, old boy. I can assure you I'll be the last chap in the world to put him straight about it. But I say we're, we're still not out of trouble. That rescue party's gaining on us. Yeah, we better get going. But your leg, man, you can't walk, walk fast enough. I know. That's where our friend Mike here comes in. Come on, let's bring him around. Mike? I don't understand. Oh, I've got a special deal lined up for Mike. He'll love it, I'm sure. He gets to carry me piggyback. Come on, let's saddle him up and get out of here. Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif, with music composed by Basil Adlam and conducted by Ralph Hollenbeck, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Join us again next Wednesday when Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell embarks on another dangerous assignment. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen Thursday, that's tomorrow night, to Sarah Burner in Sarah's Private Caper on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. <laughs> Dangerous assignment came to you from Hollywood. Next, listen for The Falcon on NBC.